This episode of Shooting the Shiznit is brought to you by WeHaveMerch.com. WeHaveMerch.com. Standard size shirt at only $12.99. Shirts include I'm a Shiznitter, my old buddy, Cool Kids Countdown logo, Shooting the Shiznit logo, Happy Shiznit Day, and many more. Order your shirt today at WeHaveMerch.com. Have you listened to episode 88? That's part of our Probe the Pod series. We talk to Suplex City Limits Jim Vicious. Here's a clip and download. All the archives are at www.stspod.club. All right, Mark Tank where I read Mark comments from online exactly as they type them. Uh, let's get into this. J.D. Filibuster. <coughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm thrilled for Seth. I stand Seth Rollins. He makes me say burn it down in the bathroom for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's me on cold days, Hawaiian hot box in my bathroom. Burn it, burn it, burn it down. Take it to he the toes. Says, he also says, it's Jason Jordan I'm not happy for. Call me a cynic. Whatever. I'm, I'm going to call you a loser and, and Jim, a mark. <laughs> I don't know what the burn it down in the bathroom thing. Well, I, I think, I think you know, he's, he's looking into the mirror. He probably thinks he's a handsome son of a bitch. And uh, and he's just saying, I'm Seth Rollins. I've got a tiny dick, too. <laughs> so he just starts screaming, burn it down. <laughs> Angela Dawn says, Seth being tag team champions with Jason Jordan Angle. First off, she says Jason Jordan Angle. Millennial. Makes zero sense and is a slap to the faces of fans who've been waiting for a Shield reunion. Good job, creative. <laughs> let's, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's the, uh, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Let's start the party. And she says, I wish that I could be like the cool kids, because all the cool kids, they seem. We're live in STS Studios. We got my co-host Lance Levine live from STS Studios in Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, yeah. Are you there? <laughs> We're here live from the Skittle Studios. We got Skittles. Skittles. We're big time in it. Yeah, we dropped uh, sixlets and now we're going to Skittles. So we got some big time promotion money behind us this week. <laughs> So we're here in Chicago, and we've got a shit-starting top ten going this week. I'm telling you, we're gonna we're gonna get some controversy here again. I'm not sure it's controversy. I think there's gonna be a lot of people behind us on this one, and, and absolutely love it. This is one of those ideas that that uh, I threw at Lance, and he went 100 percent with it. Came up with a lot of information, and we're gonna have a fun time with it. I think everyone else is gonna like it. So. It's funny because it's one of those topics that we kind of always talk about, but we never really sat down and realized that we could actually come up with 10 of these things. On this <laughs> one. So for as often as we talk about this subject, you know, so anyway, so do you want to know what we're doing? All right. Tell them. We are doing the top 10 reading would be your friend Dave Meltzer trolls on Twitter. So there are all these guys that apparently that's all they do in life is follow Meltzer on Twitter and give him shit about various things. And so, you know, Brian started throwing a couple subjects at me and we're like, we finally realized like, oh my God, we can easily come up with 10 topics that these jamokes, you know, obsess about, you know, and let's just say, you know, both of us are obviously huge Meltzer fans. We've known him forever. Uh, I always say that the, the observer is like the New York times of wrestling journalism. Uh, I've been following it. I think up almost damn near 40 years. It's been damn near 40 years of subscribing to it. Um, the guy does, you know, he's, he sets the bar as far as quality, as far as research, as far as analysis, he's second to none, you know, uh, and the publication has obviously stood the test of time. 
Um, but what's entertaining, I think, for all of us that follow on Twitter is what some of these idiots decide that they're going to, you know, give him shit about. So um, I'd say, what do you think? About two thirds of the questions that he gets are legit. And then about a third of it is crazy shit from these people. I don't, you know, it's the thing about it is, which is really weird to me because Meltzer's become, uh, you know, we always called him the guru behind his back and stuff like that. I mean, I, you know, not behind his back in the sense that we're making fun of him, but he was always the guy that had all the information and all the sources. Uh, and, you know, just we consider him a friend. I mean, I hung out with Meltzer in Memphis. Uh, he called. Uh, I've said this before on, on this podcast that uh, I was the Memphis source uh, for many years for Memphis uh, for Meltzer. He would call every Sunday afternoon um, when I was in college at a certain, you know, just any time in the afternoon. And we would sometimes talk for, you know, two to three hours. There's, there's really no telling what that guy's phone bill was just to me. But uh, he did that. That's the way he got news in the sense that he didn't, you know, everybody said, well, uh, Meltzer said this, Meltzer said that. A lot of that back then was he was talking to people in all these different places, and they were giving their opinion, and he was taking it because he trusted us and knew that uh, that our opinion mattered. And, you know, if I said Lawler was having horrible matches, which I did, and that's why Lawler wanted to whip my ass, that uh, Lawler was having horrible matches with Don Bass every week um, or every month, and, and it was, you know, he would say that. He would print it up, and, and, and so Meltzer then's become with all the Internet and everything, it's really funny to me and kind of bizarre in a way that he's become this that his name means wrestling it really does to all the smart marks uh and then like the people i've seen people even on our group the cool kids group uh say something like they hated him you know and and i've seen it in pro wrestling whatever and whatever too how you how do you hate Dave Meltzer? You know, I'm just like, that's some of the oddest shit I've ever seen. It's like, yeah, this guy, he thinks he knows everything. No, you know, <laughs> that old thing, what I forgot, uh, half of what, you know, what you know kind of thing. Uh, right, right. uh, that's the way I feel when it comes to Meltzer. I'm not, I mean, I'm a big, uh, I consider him a friend and I, you know, I admire what he's done for the rest of business and, and, uh, you know, that bulletin still goes out every week and i was been a subscriber since 86 which would be that would be 30 years right It'd be about 30 years 32 yeah yeah so 32 years and and uh so yeah it's just i think it's weird and when i see when i first saw him getting attacked um uh, i was just cracking up i was like what the hell are these people doing now now Meltzer, if you listen to him on his uh, podcast and uh, you know, if you want to make fun of anything, the way he gets excited about stuff and stutters around and talks, you can make fun of that, you know, but don't make fun, <laughs> don't make fun of the other stuff, you know, I mean, yeah. this guy loves the wrestling business, guys, you just don't know, he loves, he has to, he yeah. set through it, through some of the, you talk about thin, he's still covering the business when it was totally the shit, and uh, for people to... And I, I, I just want to get on because we usually try to spend too damn much time talking. But, but I want to put over Meltzer. Uh, I always considered him a, a, a professional. I respect his opinion. I don't always agree with him. But I think back in the days, there was a lot of Meltzerites and where we agreed with almost everything he said. Uh, I don't do that a lot now. I don't agree with a lot of the matches that he sees. But, but man, these guys, I, I'm like you. I think they spend the whole day are uh, thinking of, oh, what, what am I going to talk to about Meltzer, or what am I going to say to Meltzer today? Yep. So we came up with 10. Guys, there's more than 10. Let me yeah. tell you, way more than 10. Uh, but we're going to talk about go ahead, Go ahead, Lance. Let's All get right. started. So at number 10, we've got the how dare you tell the truth about Bruno San Martino, guys. <laughs> this Speaking is Brett. Timely. Right, I was going to say, this was, do you have the tweet, do you have any of the tweets that you want to read on this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, on this one, uh, let's see, my tweet is from at TDBaker47, did you really post or tweet about Bruno not selling out MSG as many times as claimed? If so, what's your defense for this disrespectful post? And secondly, how do you know? So there you go. <laughs> how does he know? Uh, okay. You know, that's just funny because as soon as I saw a lot of people said, man, that was just a strange time to say that. Uh, Bruno was Dave's friend uh, more than I thought. You know, if you read the uh, actual, the issue where he goes over Bruno and how him and Bruno had a relationship, 
uh, kind of like Lance Russell. And uh, so, but Dave's uh, number one. He's not going to let people just sit there and say, "Oh, Bruno sold out." Uh, you know, twelve hundred Madison Square Gardens from nineteen eighty three to you know, it's horseshit. That's all they do. News, and, and if that tells you anything, the things that we know about wrestling, and that the real news reports that such horseshit, that should tell you that the real news, all the stuff that they report, if anything about wrestling, most of the time their facts are totally wrong. And, uh, you know, I don't have to defend Meltzer on this one. He can say what he wants to say, but it's the fucking truth. That was it. It was the fucking truth. Yeah, it was this week's controversy, obviously. Um, it's just, if it wasn't clear to you how... Dave revered Bruno from the obituary that he wrote in this week's issue, which is a masterpiece. I mean, it's so painfully obvious if you only took the time to read it, how respectfully it's written and how thoroughly it's researched. I mean, what was he supposed to do? Just let the exaggeration not be corrected? I mean, the guy's a reporter and a top-notch reporter, so of course he's going to correct it when somebody, you know, when history perpetuates a mistake. And it's just another one of those, you know, WWF or, or whatever figures that just got believed as far as being real and the guy simply corrected it so i don't know you know if they're making the time and the place argument whatever but i mean again he's simply reporting the facts and all you have to do is read this week's issue like you said read this week's issue to find out how much dave obviously adored bruno san martino and obviously bruno so well loved in the business and i don't think anybody could have possibly revered him and appreciated him more than dave showed in this week's issue so that's number number 10 at number nine, we have the White Knights who were pissed off that he reported the names in the Michael Elgin case. That's right. Um, now, do you have any tweets on this one? Yeah, on this All one, right. I've got <laughs> at Jen Mint with you pick and choose which women you want to shame. It's gross and you're trash. <laughs> oh, hey, Meltzer's trash now. Trash. Guys, let, let, yeah, let's. this case was not... A rape case on this this woman that the Elgin case against this woman was not a rape case, guys. That's the first thing you got to remember. Most, when it comes to rape cases, they do not give the victim's name. This was not a rape case. Elgin filed... Uh, discriminatory she said stuff you know uh what's the actual legal i don't know what the legal what would they call this um uh, wasn't it defamation of character there you go there you go that's what i'm looking for and and that's what it was and it had in the case it had and you me anyone they wanted to could go and look at who who it was filed against because this lady put up tweets and everything um I, I still believe, and this has really nothing to do with Meltzer, but I believe there's some kind of truth to the fact that, that something should have been done about what, what happened. Uh, but Elgin's case against this woman is that she just put out private stuff just to keep him from making, and it has kept him from making money at many, um, at many independent shows. So that's what it was about. If you realize that, and you shouldn't be, you know, getting on your white horse and trying to save this lady. Yeah, I mean, there's a breed of male fan that thinks that if they stand up for women in wrestling, that it's going to help them get laid and possibly get them out of their mom's basement. That's that's the White Knights, the way I look at these guys. They have no chance at getting laid, and they're probably going to live in mom's basement for the rest of their lives. But the people that defended her and got pissed at him for reporting her name was just out of control. Um, if you happen to have seen this woman's Twitter, I mean, she's kind of a scumbag. And I'm certainly not defending uh, Elgin because he, you know, he played a role in this whole thing and his his laundry his dirty laundry is exposed too but i mean this woman's kind of a scumbag so people that are coming to her defense just simply because she has a vagina kind of cracks me up so it's like newsflash there's some asshole women out there too it's the men don't have a you know a, a monopoly on the term of asshole just so you know um also, uh, I'm, well, while we're on the topic of the White Knights, the, the Bailey situation kind of reminded me of that from a couple of years ago when Dave was saying how, you know, they're wasting Bailey's talents as the, you know, the baby face appealing to the little girls by letting her toil in NXT for as long as she is. And that he said something to the effect of, you know, there's a certain shelf life to the Bailey act. 
And people, once again, the guys got all pissed off because he was saying she was old and he was criticizing her looks. It's like it had nothing to do with that. That that act is only going to have a certain shelf life, you know. So he was trying to recommend that they bring her up to the main roster and and take advantage of it while she was still at a certain age. So anyway, at number eight, we have the Dallas WrestleMania attendance doubters and the (laughs) WrestleMania three attendance doubters. I I don't get this one. I've seen so many tweets about this, and I think it's just fucking hilarious. It's not like Dave didn't do his homework. It's not like he didn't call Dallas, Texas, and, and talk to someone there and find out how many people was in the building kind of thing. It's just, and here's the thing about it, Lance, and I don't know how you feel about it, but the way I feel about it, I could give a hairy ass, you know, what the fuck, nuts. Yep. I mean, I don't care, man. I, have, I love it when you say, "Well, we beat the record," and and I'm I'm a business I'm, I'm a business mark in the sense that that's that's what I do. I used to run my own business. I love reading the business the business part of the business, uh, but. With them being a public-owned company now, now, WrestleMania three, I don't have any fucking idea, but with them being publicly owned, the money that they made on that Mania in Dallas and all of that is record. You can go and get it, guys. Uh, Dave just is not spending, you know, nights uh, losing sleep trying to figure out a fucking number for the, them. Why is the WrestleMania 3 number, the myth number of 93,173, because I looked it up, why is that even a thing today? Who cares? It's fucking 30 years ago. Who cares about that mythological number? Why do I keep seeing posts on this and questions and, you know, commentary on that number? To this day, he gets messages about this. And the Dallas thing for WrestleMania 32, I think... Vince could probably announce that they they had a million people were in that arena and you're you know these WWE apologists would believe it you know so it's like whatever number Vince says and whatever they deem to announce that's what these WWE apologists are going to believe and they're going to question Dave for everything you know and I remember him talking about you know that included the vendors and the security guards and everything else that was in the building I'm like yeah so it's not fans and again, to your point, who the hell cares? You know, it's like they're going to have whatever. In that one, they had 80,000 people. You know, in any big giant stadium, they're going to have thousands and thousands of people. They're going to make a fortune on it. Who cares what the exact fucking number is? So if it wasn't 93,173 instead of 172, somebody would be pissed off about it. So Well, you think, you think these fucking fans are getting paid for how many people were in the damn building? It, I mean, what the hell? Again, we got a news flash for you folks. Wrestling is a work, just so you know, it's not real. So, anyway, at number 7, again, we have the timely one of the Andre the Giant's real height truthers. <laughs> and I do have uh, see, I got one on that. Uh, all right. This week this this contributor is at Mikey Messier. HBO Docs and WWE Network team up to honor honor Andre the Giant. Quite impressive. And no Dave Meltzer claiming Andre was really 6'5 or some such nonsense. And then he finishes the tweet with just simply, 7 foot 4! That's it. No sentence. Just 7 foot 4. That's all he said. So there you go. I mean, I read the Observer where he talked about the Andre Doctor, and then a lot of tweets, a lot of tweets about actual, the height of, uh, of Andre, you know. I don't care. He was probably one of the biggest humans if I ever, you know, got to see him alive, uh, alive, alive. If I saw him alive, maybe if I seen him dead, he would weigh less uh, or, or was uh, taller, you know, or shorter dead. No, uh, I never saw him live. I really did. Uh, so I don't know. I see El Gante. He was one of the biggest guys. Well, it was actually the biggest human I ever seen. Uh, so, but it really doesn't matter to me. I don't, he was Andre the Giant. He was usually bigger than anyone in the ring. And all the promotions and stuff around him is just like, uh, uh, was all the carny stuff. It really didn't matter that he was what his actual height was. Uh, I think it's really funny that there's a story, uh, and Meltzer talked about this. Was it Wilt Chamberlain he had pictures taken with in the WWE? Oh, was all- yeah, yeah, yeah. Wilt yeah. and uh, 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 Arnold Schwarzenegger in that yeah. picture. 
and they were just uh, WWE. Uh, Will Chamberlain had uh, it went into a yearbook or something. There was pictures of him in Observer yearbook of him and Andre, and WWE was uh, shitting themselves over it. So I thought that was a funny part of the story. This is another really timely one, obviously, because of the release of the documentary. So, again, why are people so pissed at him reporting a number, you know? And again, like you said before, what the fuck does it matter, you know? I mean, was he six foot nine or six foot nine and three quarters? And I mean, again, why is it coming up? I mean, I know why it's coming up in the last couple of weeks because of the documentary but who the fuck cares you know does it take away from andre's legacy andre's career you know as m- how much you liked him or didn't like him or whatever does that inch or inch and a half or three quarters of an inch matter i mean are these people also gonna be pissed off if uh what is it called wide men don't wipe if they report that lebron james is eight foot nine Le- Le- lebron james is eight foot nine people and when people criticize that and don't believe it, are they going to get pissed at them for reporting that? So did he drink 60 or 61 beers, you know, at one sitting? So anyway, it's just it's amazing that these people are so worked up. And especially, like you said, that picture of Wilt and uh, and Schwarzenegger with Andre. It's so hilarious because people are like, you see, look at that. See, look at that. I'm like, you, they could be standing on anything. Who knows what the fuck is going on at the bottom of that picture? So you morons back off already with this fucking Andre's real height stuff. So at number six, we have the spoiler complainers. You know, before you get get off the Andre uh, story, I've always, you know, this is the thing that I've wondered about Andre and, you know, Yokozuna and a few other workers. How the hell did they wipe their asses? That's <laughs> I, I really wish they did a documentary on, on Andre and how he wiped his ass. So, you know. You I, should tweet Dave about that. Uh, maybe he'll know. Okay, number six is spoiler. Number six, spoiler <laughs> complainers, yeah. Do you have a tweet on the spoiler complainers? I do not. I do all not. right, all right. Uh, guys, this is stupid. I, I see it all the time where, you know, Dave's putting out the uh, all the taping results for TNA, and he's putting our impact or what you want to call it, Lucha Underground. Uh, you know, Lucha Underground is taped, and we don't see it for, you know, a year sometimes. And here's the deal. You don't have to actually read the spoilers. You, you don't. I watch Impact. Um, and guess what? I avoid the spoilers. Now they're in the Observer. Uh, I skip. I know this is hard for you to understand, and it has to be. But I actually skip that part of the Observer, as in I don't read it. And so I'm not spoiled. Now, every once in a while, you know, you'll get something like Austin Aries won the world title or, or, or you know, um, when Pentagon won it this week, I, I, I'm stupid because I got, I actually damn got, spoiler. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got on the damn tw- tweeter, you know, and uh, they told me, but uh, guys, they've been putting spoilers in Observer for as long as we can put spoilers in it. And soon as the internet, um, you know, uh, there was. There's always going to be spoilers. There's nothing you can do except not read them. So, yeah. so yeah, especially like you said, Lucha Underground and TNA because they tape the furthest out. How dare you report on tapings, Dave Meltzer? How dare you? How dare you report on the news? You know, you're a news publication. How dare you report on that? Here's a thought. Like you said, fucking turn the page. Jesus Christ, how hard is it to skip the Lucha Underground page if it's going to piss you off that much? So, And for me, honestly, they tape Lucha a year in advance in some cases. So I'll read that shit, and I still don't remember it a year <laughs> later when I'm watching the show. So right. it really doesn't matter. I mean, TNA, similar. You know, there's the TNA apologists that want, you know, that obviously TNA can do no wrong, so they gotta they got to argue about TNA. But they tape, you know, whatever, six eight nine weeks in advance sometimes and like you said skip it jesus christ and if you want to switch to a different you're obviously subscribing to Meltzer because you're reading that shit so why don't you just skip that page maybe you should switch here's a thought maybe you should switch to pro wrestling illustrated if you don't want breaking news you know and that's not a dig at pro wrestling illustrated but we all know they're a little bit less up to date than Meltzer is so you guys sound like marks when you complain about the spoilers. You know, you can't just simply turn the page and skip it and maybe go back to it a couple of weeks or months later. So that is number six, the spoiler complainers. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial. And we'll be right back. This episode of Shooting the Shiznit is brought to you by WeHaveMerch.com. WeHaveMerch.com. Standard size shirts at only twelve ninety nine. Shirts include I'm a Shiznitter, my old buddy, 
Cool Kids Countdown logo, Shooting the Shiznit logo, Happy Shiznit Day, and many more. Order your shirt today at wehavemerch.com. All right, or we're back. I just I want to form you of something, Lance. That commercial with that woman talking about we have merch. She sounds hot. I, I'm going to sleep with her tonight. Oh damn! That's, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all. I'm saying. Good. All right, all right. Here we go. All right, at number five, we've got the ever popular. Did you ever get in the ring and or promote Dave Meltzer? You know, uh, did you get, did you get any tweets for this? So I did not, but I have a bunch for the last four. All right. That, I mean, you know, this was uh, a huge argument back in the day, especially when kayfabe sheets and were, were not that popular. I'm just surprised that it still exists. Um, this was, you know, uh, this I talked about law. Me and Lawler got into it one time, and this was his his defense that I had never been in the ring, and I don't know whether I could. I can tell whether a match is good or not. Uh, I think the best way, uh, the base, best comparison of this has always been, uh, I've, I've never been an actor, guys. I never have. Um, and actually, I, I can't say I've been an athlete. So I, I can actually tell the difference between when, um, when a person is a shitty actor and I also can tell when a person cannot, you know, shoot hoops and actually hit the, hit the hoop you know with the ball so i could tell you when they're but i've never done those things so i just think it's uh i think it's stupid it's not one of those uh dave gets pissed sometimes and says you know hey you don't know i did this or did that uh i think he bumped one time and he managed jerry Lawler one time in polynesian wrestling so he's done a little bit but uh guys you, this is not even an argument and there's guys in the wrestling business that actually still are pissed at dave Meltzer. Yep. uh that he makes a living and a better living than they do. So, <laughs> so to your point, I've never been a chef, but I know what fucking tastes good and I know what good food is. You know, so you don't have to be that. You know, you don't have to be a wrestler to be able to critique wrestling, and you don't have to be a promoter to be able to critique wrestling. Um, because the only people who understand the business are actual wrestlers. I mean, is that the logic there? <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. I thought Roger, you know, we've talked about it before. Roger Ebert broke that mold, you know, as far as being somebody who can write intelligently. In fact, Pulitzer Prize winning writing about movies, having never made a movie. And I know he made a movie. That's beside the point. But the guy is the greatest writer when it comes to writing about film ever. Um and just like I put, I would put Meltzer up there as far as what he contributes to journalism in terms of this business. Uh, I'm pretty sure some of us who are college educated and have been watching wrestling closely for 35 or more years get it. You know, I don't think you have to have been in the ring. I can't do a bump off the ropes. I can't, you know, promote a card. But I know what makes a good match, and I know what you know makes a successful promotion. So I'll put his business reporting and his business acumen up against anybody. I mean, there's nobody that can compare to what he does. So for some of these goofs that say, did you ever get in the ring? Did you ever promote? To use that as a criticism is really beyond silly. So at number four... I, well, hey, hold on. Just, when I did the Wrestle Riot uh, website with the Memphis area for like five years, there were guys that would try to use that on me, you know. Even though I'd been a manager, I still had not been a regular wrestler and I didn't know what I was doing. And there was also and I think this is funny, uh there's also those fans or those wrestlers that still in the business that their defense is, well I could whip his ass. <laughs> And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, you know, my 11-year-old my neighbor, yeah, my 11-year-old neighbor over here across the street might be able to whip my ass, even though he looks like uh, Zach Zabra Jr., you know, so, but, but you know, it's a big deal. I, I'm not a tough guy, but you suck in the ring, and that's pretty much what I would tell him, so. So, all right, at number four, we have the illiterates, <laughs> simply the illiterates, the guys whose criticisms go out the window because they're just stupid. So we do have a tweet for this one, and this is comes to us from <laughs> at boozyboy37, and this sentence has no punctuation, so just deal with it. And it's there's multiple words misspelled. So it's fine to pimp out children. Shut up, Dave. You're an absolute idiot thinking it's meaningless. And... I underlined six words that were misspelled in that little short snippet. So he's <laughs> talking about the moolah situation. So the illiterates, my friend. Man, uh, 
I, you see this with everybody, not only Meltzer. You see it with all the the stars and how you know everyone's got something to say and. And, uh, you know, even myself, you know, I know this might surprise you, Lance, but uh, I fuck up on Twitter every once in a while. Uh, I leave out, never uh, seen it. Yeah, leave, <laughs> leave out words and letters. Uh, but, yeah, it's just, when you, if you want to fight and get mad at somebody, I think it's the funniest thing when you're just so stupid what you put <laughs> makes you look, you know, worse than you are. I mean, it's just, you you can't even make the point, so just keep your mouth shut. That's the way I feel about people like that. Yeah, you're just embarrassing yourself. Um, it's one thing when you're ILY ass king one and you're foreign and your shit just sounds stupid because there's a language <laughs> barrier. And you can look him up. Please do. Uh, at ILY ass king one. It's the greatest artwork you'll ever see. Great, it's, greatest artwork ever. He, I heard he's doing Canellus Baby next. Oh, my God. It, it's one thing like if you're foreign baby. and they... <laughs> <laughs> you're going to ruin my composure. And uh, like you're the guys that are on Mark Tank on Suplex City Limits. It's one thing when you're foreign and there's a language barrier. I mean, it's still funny to me because I have like the mentality of a 12-year-old. But when you are American and you just sound like a fucking buffoon, you're trolling and you're, any argument you have goes out the window when you try to come after somebody who is a, you know, a brilliant college educated person like Meltzer is uh you lose all credibility for your argument if you can't make a sentence with there there and there used correctly or two two and two used correctly so you just said the you know you're you're not any good points you just number three we have the russo defenders and the pritchard yes men and I do have, let's see, on this one, I have from at Southern Snorlax. Thank you, Dave. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That is not. That's number two. For this one, I've got at Sushi5X. Big Dave just castrated himself on this one at the Vince Russo at Hey, Hey, It's Conrad. And Meltzer's response was, imagine there are still people like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the thing about it is... I, at, at, you're not going to believe I'm going to say this, but I kind of see their point sometimes about this. Uh, but they don't understand. Like I said, Meltzer, Meltzer was talking to so many people uh, at the time these things happened. Uh, was he there? That's the main thing. They asked, was he, he wasn't there, so he didn't know what was going on. Um, unfortunately, Pritchard and Russo both were the only ones that see, they had their own perspective perception of what was going on at the time uh and you know the old uh the old game we played in elementary where you you told the story at the very front of the the teacher gave it to somebody and then it went around the whole classroom and by the time it got at the yeah 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 is that what it's called well Telephone, uh, yeah. uh and at the end you know you got blue people suck dick or something like that you know we, <laughs> we always put dick in it or wiener uh just so to piss off the teacher but uh uh that's what this reminds me of. That you know, what Pritchard, I believe what Pritchard says. I believe he probably believes it. Uh, Russo also they believe what they're saying. Uh, and, uh, and and but the thing about it is, Meltzer had many people around at that time and what was going on. And, and a lot of the stuff, you know, maybe Pritchard is right, but no one's going to be one hundred percent right on everything. And for some reason. Dave Meltzer don't know fuck about what was going on, but Russo and Pritchard do. So, you know, I'll say Russo was somebody in the business, and he accomplished things in the business. Pritchard, to a lesser extent, in my opinion, was somebody and accomplished things in the business. But it's obvious that their act is to rip Dave. It's an act, and it's a bad act. And the thing is that the idiot lemmings that follow them believe everything that they say, and they don't even realize how staged all that shit is, and that they're just doing it to get tr Twitter followers and to make waves on Twitter. But they were there. You know, it's like, whatever, they were there. And uh, what, that makes them an expert on every single thing that happened in WCW back then or in WWF back then? So, come on. It's just like, I don't understand how these people can't see through it, that it's all a charade. It's Again, it's wrestling, folks. It's a work. There's a lot of it that is based on con men and their actions um i do like conrad i will say you know you've had him on the show he seems like a good guy and i think he keeps things a little bit more in perspective but some of these fans really need to open their eyes and the whole going after dave on twitter is just so ridiculous as far as like it's okay like you said there's going to be 
the black and white side of the stories and the gray. There's going to be multiple sides to the different stories. And I think if I'm going to put any credibility in anybody, it's going to be Dave, you know, for better or worse. Um, my book, Pritchard's 15 Minutes, are just about up. I know he just got the big gig on WWE Network. You know, hopefully that pays off for Conrad because I like him. But uh, as far as the rest of these goofs, back off already. Um, at number two, we have... And just for the record, I like both Rousseau and Pritchard, believe it or not, and uh, and uh, enjoy some of the stuff that they talk about because they were there. I understand that. I do. Yeah, yeah. I have a fun time listening to their perspective of what was going on. But to me, uh, Conrad is what tones uh, Pritchard down, and, and Conrad's never... Uh, He's never uh, scared to say something like, man, this is bullshit, you know, kind of thing. I've seen him post many times. I'm just a fan, you know. Pritchard Pritchard is, and this this is what you were getting to, guys. Let me give, I'm going to tell you another secret tonight. We're we're getting all these secrets tonight. Breaking news. Bruce Pritchard is a worker, guys. He is a worker. If you don't know what I mean by that, then it should, hey, you are being worked. You don't think he likes Dave Meltzer? Hell yeah! I mean, you are being worked, is all I gotta say. You are being worked. So, there we go. So, alright. So, at number two, one of the hottest ones, we have the star (laughs) rating complainers. The people that complain over the star ratings. And I actually have three quick tweets on this one. So, on this one, first we have from at Tranquilo992, Dave should have give five star for Nakamura (laughs) and Styles, because that match was really great, and it wasn't, but that's beside the point. Uh, We also have from at Southern Snorlax, thank you, Dave, for recognizing the awesome work NXT's been putting out. Now, how about a retroactive bump up for Zayn Nakamura? (laughs) That was like three years ago. (laughs) And then finally, we have from at Skull123451, Dave Meltzer should have had Taker versus Michaels be rewarded the five-star match it deserved. I respect him, but I don't like how he has a bias toward WWE when rating their matches. Which, that last sentence doesn't even make sense. He's biased against WWE is what you're trying to say, idiot. So, anyway, the star rating complainers, sir. Oh, man. You know, this has been something that's happened for years, and and it was uh, a lot inside the business. I mean, you would see guys that... uh, and this is Pritchard's show, too, when Dave rates a match. I think it's hilarious when he says uh, Dave didn't know what the hell he was talking about. You know, he'll give somebody three stars or something. And it's almost like they don't under- they don't understand. And, and and I spoke to Alan Steele about this. I did this on the Wrestle Riot site uh, in Memphis area. I did that five stars and all that. And... Uh, and it was like, Allen was like the only one that got it. I mean, Dave is one person. Dave Meltzer is one guy, y'all. This is what he thought about that match. And that's the stars he gave it. It's really not a big deal. I mean, uh, I thought the six stars thing was outrageous. I didn't really like that. But but uh, I'll give, you know, I, sometimes I, I'll give a match that uh, I really like five stars because I liked it. It was five stars. I remember a Hardy's match against... Uh, uh, the Wolves, uh, Eddie Edwards, and uh, what was his tag team partner? I'm sorry, I can't remember uh, today. Davey Richards. Davey Richards. It was them against the Hardys on uh, Impact one time, and I gave it five stars. And I remember, I think it was John McAdam or someone else in our group saying, uh, man, uh, I don't think, how is that five stars? It's on Impact Wrestling. That was their excuse that it was on impact, and there's no way it could have been five stars. Couldn't possibly have been. No, no. So, uh, but that's, I mean, uh, I've got criticism about stars I give matches. Do you got to realize it's what Dave liked about that match? Just take her and Sean. I got a secret to tell you, Lance, about that match. I, Did that, you see one of them nude? I've never watched that match. What? Wow. All right, so now to number one. All right, well, can I finish on two? Oh, I guess so. Why not? All right. So they quibble over a quarter star rating. That's what these people, they have no life because they're quibbling over a quarter star rating. How is Sean and Taker not five stars? You know, here's the news flash. Another hot take. Wrestling is subjective. This is one man's opinion. Granted, an educated fan, but one man's opinion. You know, we all disagree, and that's okay. You know, there might be a, a match that you said was five stars. I might be four and three quarters or four. You know, it's a subjective art form. You know, we're going to disagree on things, and that's okay. You know, it's rare that a match is something that's, 
universally, you know, either loved or despised. You know, the Omega and Okada was probably the most recent one I can think of that was probably universally loved. Um, deal with it, folks. It is one man's opinion. Try not to let his star ratings ruin your entire life because for people to still be carrying on about Sean and Taker – from like five years ago or whatever it was is just beyond ridiculous. So at number one, the number one Dave Meltzer reading would be your friend troll on Twitter is the accusers of Japanese favoritism. And oh, wow. on that one, we have two of my favorite tweets from at midnight blue one, one five. If that Uso's new day match was held in Japan, Dave Meltzer would give it five stars. Hashtag SmackDown after mania. And the best tweet I believe from what I rounded up from at Feeburn at Bruce Pritchard. It's nice to hear someone who shares my hate for Dave Meltzer. I don't know why these guys kill themselves with the idea of impressing this dick. I don't need him to tell me what a good match is. And apparently if that, if it's hot, if it's not Japan, it's not good enough. Hashtag fuck him. (laughs) Man, got all angry and excited on that one. Uh, You know, uh, believe it or not, Dave actually likes Japanese wrestling better than he does the wrestling in the States. And, you know, (laughs) wow, Uh, for some reason that hurts a bunch of people's feelings. So I don't know why it does, but for some reason, you know, if if Dave likes a match better in Japan than than a match that was in WWE, uh, then, um, you know, he's not given... I've even seen Roman Reigns, you know, say, well, Roman Reigns, if he would have had that match in Japan, it would have been Roman Reigns is having four star matches. But, but it's just funny that it's, uh, you know, Dave tried to explain this and, and it goes back to W, uh, a PWG and some of the other smaller promotions. Uh, you can sit through a match and enjoy a match. He gives it five stars. It's an enjoyment factor. And, and I, I'll, I'll eventually have him on the show to talk about the star system, but it, it is an enjoyment factor. Um, and, and Dave is going to like PWG. He's going to like Japan more than he's going to like, uh, you know, uh, some match that he's seen a hundred times doing. Now, don't get me wrong. I like WWE and I like, I like it all, but the WWE has a, uh, psychology that they do in almost every match, 90% of them. And, and if you watch it very closely, you see one WWE match, you've seen them all. They get better, but <laughs> with you guys like AJ who do stuff different, but it's all one psychology. Uh, and so, yeah, he's going to, I think this is the biggest thing that people don't understand that, yeah, Dave is going to like Japanese matches better than he does WWE. So get over it, motherfuckers. Here's, once again, we have breaking news. Japanese wrestling <laughs> is pretty good. Just so you know, it's pretty good. Um, it's probably going to get good reviews for most people that actually try to watch it. So, But he also, in case you're not paying attention, he also gives pretty good reviews and pretty good star ratings to NXT matches. I think there were, oh, I don't know, two five-star matches on the last TakeOver. He gives good reviews and good stars to WWE matches. You know what it's called? It's called objectivity. It's called watching good matches and appreciating good matches regardless of where they are you know we've talked before there's the eight man tags in japan that i could give a shit less about and i don't really care about and probably on some of those there's like a star or two stars you know he gives good reviews and good grades to good matches regardless of where they are so just so you wwe apologists know not everything in wwe is perfect folks just so you know just so you're aware you tna fans too not everything that they touch turns to gold you know so there are bad matches there and we just like Alter does. And when you WWE goofs can give me a Mojo Raleigh match that's better than an Okada match, then let's talk about this, okay? So stop with the accusations of Japanese favoritism. He just, I think he favor, favors good quality product, regardless of where it is. Just happens to be there's more of it in Japan than there is in the States right now. So there you go. There are the top 10 Meltzer trolls, my friend. <laughs> thanks, guys, for joining us. Lance, thanks for helping me out with this uh, episode. Uh, like I said before, I like to throw ideas at Lance, and he goes with it, man. You're awesome. Uh, we're going to be b- back here, same bad time, same bad channel, on the best little wrestling podcast in the business. Love my mama. I love lemmings and llamas. Bingo! Oh, 
now I yeah. I, I Actually, got, I hate lemmings. Now I think about it. I got control. I got out of control there. I just you know got ex- 